Today we will talk about uh, patterns, but actually not that patterns like surface patterns, but about limited and blocking patterns. And our guest today is my my friend and incredible coach and therapist Marina. And we will discuss with her how these limited patterns uh, blocks us, block us, or how they can help us to find our individuality. So I'm really curious about this conversation and think there will be a lot of insights on how to just to understand yourself better how to be creative because um, actually i think that uh, we can create more freely and with more joy when we feel more confident uh, as like personal like just personal um so marina if you're here please send me an um, uh, request and i will add you to their life and also while we are waiting for marina uh, joining us uh, i would love to um, remind you that pattern camp is uh, already opened uh, its door community doors and we will have the first uh, meetup for community welcome one it will be on wednesday and on a thursday we have we will have their first workshop and this Yeah, I accepted. Hello, oops, accept. Yes, yeah. Hello. Hello, how are you? I am good. Coming to you from Morocco. So I hope my internet works properly. Yeah, it works well. Um, how is your journey in Morocco is uh, kind of contrast very contrasted oh my god here. god yes did you see that i was sharing it is not what i expected it's not my first time in morocco but it's my first time in marrakesh and uh it's definitely a place of contrasts. I'm just gonna say that. And and I have I have traveled quite a bit in all sorts of parts of the world. But yeah, it's um it's definitely a lot of insight. Speaking about patterns, you know, I I do love traveling because being in a completely different context, it's a great opportunity to see uh to see where you know the the different patterns that I don't normally get to see or different behaviors, you know, or mindsets. And so for that, I'm, I'm really grateful. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, today, so we will talk about these blocking patterns and can you explain us first, what are the blocking patterns uh, in the context of personal development and therapy? What is it? <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. Well, first of all, I want to say I'm super thrilled to be here with you. I, I always love our chats. I was just rewatching some of our conversations and I saw like my face just beams every time I get to chat with you. And especially like with your upcoming course on patterns, which, by the way, can I take it? <laughs> I want to be part of it. Yeah, um, of course. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah, I, I was like, I don't think I signed up, but I'm going to. Um, yes, limiting patterns and beliefs. Well. First of all, everybody has them. This is how we grow up. Um, you know, we sort of, we have it in our families. We have it. It's, it's a certain, I would say it's a strategy. And a lot of the times it becomes an unconscious strategy of how we see the world and how we respond and, and connect with the world. And so a lot of the times these patterns are formed, um, let's say you go to school or in your family, a certain behavior it could be behavior with money or what what is believed like if somebody grew up in a country like for example i grew up in in the 90s in russia right where things were changing all the time and um it wasn't necessarily very safe and so people couldn't you know couldn't save up or there was no job securities and so there will be that would be imprinted let's say on in some way or another on the way i respond to reality so later on when we grew up and things change and things are different these patterns still stay with us and 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 define how we respond to everything does it make sense yeah and, and uh, 
when it, when I think it this topic for the first time, it sounds for me like it's it's not something good, but it's not so right. <laughs> yeah, this is exactly okay. When we when we chatted last week, I was like, they're amazing. These patterns are actually really fun. And you were like, really? <laughs> Why? Why would they be amazing? <laughs> Because a lot of the times they hold our fears, right? They don't allow us to be in great relationships or um, get a get a raise, right? Earn more money, get a job that you like really, really want. They essentially prevent us from uh, stepping into our potential, our authentic selves, thriving instead of surviving. Um, but I think they're amazing because they're the other side of the coin. Um, to me each pattern of each person, like we all have them, but each pattern is their unique imprint and it holds a story. It's like, let me tell you this thing, guys. Uh, so, you know, diamonds. So diamonds are considered to be, you know, valuable when there's, there, there's, there's no imperfections. When diamonds contain no pattern, um, it, it means they're sort of the most valuable. However, they become the same. They, to me, they're very boring in that way. But patterns, the, each diamond has a unique pattern, which took thousands and thousands of years to accumulate. You can recognize each diamond by the patterns that it creates. And humans are the same. So we are, it, it, it defines who we are, our uniqueness. And when you go towards the pattern of someone, when you identify, like when I work with clients or with my students in, in workshops, I hear their stories and I hear what formed them and we get to open this pattern, realize it, transform it. And there's an immense amount of power that comes through that. Like we get to, the, because patterns are created as a survival mechanism, there's strength in that, there's great power. And people don't like miss that whole point. They don't seem to appreciate how much they have done. And once we reverse that, once they set, step into the, the sort of the reverence to the experience that they've had, you know, they, um, they become, they become, uh, in, in the, they come to the position of choice. You can choose who you want to be once, once it's no longer holding you. Right. 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 I, I suppose there are different stages. First, you have to not, just notice that you have these patterns because it's for i think for some people it's not easy and for me some some of my patterns i do not notice at all it just they just don't exist and the next stage when i notice them then i often start to judge myself for these patterns okay Paulina, yeah. why are you doing this for ages why <laughs> stop <them. laughs> stop it <laughs> and so and there is very important switch as i hear you that uh, after you notice this and um, just okay, accept that's okay it's, it's okay everything is normal with me and what i can do knowing this um mm -hmm. having this information this knowledge of these patterns yeah I, I i mean i love the way you explained it uh, absolutely the patterns will um they're designed in a way that we don't notice them because they become habits Right. And I can give you an example. Like, for example, like, uh, let's say there's a girl called Deborah and Deborah is, let's say, an A star student. Right. She from as a little girl, she was told that, you know, if she wants to receive love and attention and approval from her family, she has to bring good grades or she has to do her chores at home. Right. And she has to she has to earn the love, let's say. So the subconscious message there is that she is not worthy just by being who she is. It's not enough, right? So she, she's not enough to be loved, which is not okay. And probably that's how her parents grew up. And so she goes on in life, finding herself as an adult in the same circles of being in a job or being in a relationships where she's not seen or loved or accepted fully because within herself, there is that pattern, right? Of I have to earn it. I can't just simply receive it. It does not exist. It simply, it, it forms her view of the world. So she can't see it. The only way she can see it is she's like, why am I in these relationships that never work out? Or why am I in different jobs, but constantly, um, you know, constantly in the position of not being promoted or not doing what I love. And so 
that's how we start to notice these patterns. It's like, I really want to change my life. Like, I really want to achieve, I don't know, um, be healthier, earn more or whatever that is. I want to have a bigger community, right? Or more like-minded people. And so then, then there's a blog that, that shows up. And that's when we're like, let's look at this pattern. Let's look what's really going on because it's not the external. It's always internal. It's always an inside job, the change. And then, of course, the shame shows up because the minute you see what unconsciously you have been doing all your life, you're like, it's, there's a lot of sadness. There's a lot of, uh, it's like grief. It's like, and it is sad. It's like, you know, she didn't deserve any of that. Um, and then realizing that there's strength in there too, you know, how much she's accomplished or, you know, limiting patterns have different layers. It's not so black and white. And once we don't fight them, once we'll be like, okay, who is that person? And by the way, anyone who's listening, do you guys can relate? Do you have any stories like that or any situations that you keep finding yourself in? And if you do, you know, just share it here. It would be, it would be great to see, but yeah, not fighting it. And actually, getting into the dialogue and appreciating it you know nobody nobody likes to to be i don't know to be criticized yeah. right yeah. E even even your patterns yeah there, there's a comment actually um, let's have a look your patterns your patterns are you uh, complete you but sometimes trying to release from it you will end up something different than the way you feel safe and comfortable don't judge it or let anyone judge it well actually yeah there's a good point feeling safe and comfortable well so my question to dalreem mm -hmm. who wrote this comment thank you is what if your comfort and your safety is is actually criticism is, is what is actually not a healthy idea of what safety is a lot of us don't, don't have a great understanding like let's say for deborah for example safety is what she knows and what she knows is to be in situations when she is not good enough and constantly proving her worth so she will subconsciously this pattern will lead her to find the situation right mm -hmm. so the idea would be counterintuitive and this is where people don't like pattern work and that's why i think it's really important to have a coach or a therapist or a community where it can be done in a healthy you know supportive way um but yes they in that situation it would be unhealthy to step into a healthy situation if you know what i mean so it's it's the same. if you if you're used to a toxic relationship then then if you meet someone who's not toxic and stable, they'll, they'll freak you out because they'll actually contradict the reality, the sense of reality that you're used to. And the safe person will actually feel a lot more unsafe because they will be threatening the type of reality of your pattern that you've lived all your life with. Does that make sense? Yeah, right. Actually, I have one personal question. Maybe you can yeah. answer. Sure. Sure. Uh, recently, I noticed noticed that uh, I have one pattern that uh, some often I do not accept uh, some someone in one hundred percent just totally accept this. When you like your children, you accept them as they are, but uh, for other people, I love them, I accept them, but not hundred percent. And I th and it's what I see in this, that I do not accept myself for 100%. I mean, that I always have, have this criticizing part that say, yeah, everything is great, but what, this, this thing, <laughs> it uh, might be a little bit better. <laughs> it's not good enough. And I now I see that this pattern limits me from many things, actually. It's like my manager in my head who is saying, yeah, it's great, but not, not good enough. So stop it. <laughs> Let's try yeah. to do something else. <laughs> What, what, so I, I would, my question to you, can you love that part of you that, that manager part of you? Can you, can, can you see and accept that there's part that is maybe going to be, you know, nervous or stressed out or finding that, oh, no, 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 this, this is it's not enough, not never. It's never a hundred percent. And I, the first thing is like, can you, well, one, you see that. So congrats, you're actually being able to see this part. So you're already in contact, you're already further along. And then the next step is like, can you love that part of yourself? Can you love that part that actually is essentially tries really hard, right? And, and 
possibly doesn't find rest as well. Can you appreciate how much that part cares about you and wants to make it work? I'm fully accepted. Don't fight it. <laughs> you mean that manager part? Like, yes. Oh, I don't know. I feel like it's uh, like, I don't know, like something that, uh, that I would love to change in, in myself. I mean that I feel like it's just, I, I understand that it helped me a lot during my life. It's uh, helped me so much. It, it, there was a situation when without that part, I wouldn't survive kind of, yeah? Yeah. Right? So it how, it, how it's uh, uh, appeared. Uh, but now uh, it feels like an inner controller mm -hmm. who just don't, doesn't let to live my life. And this is why it's very hard to get in love with this, with this part. It, no. It, not necessarily be in love but just like be loving and so okay let me explain so imagine you have a partner right let's say a business partner who um is maybe not the easiest person to get on with but that person that as a partner has has gotten you through so many difficult situations Right. It's like that is essentially this is your winning partnership also, or it has been so far. And yes, like with any relationship, you have to renegotiate sometimes. It's like, okay, things have changed. Like, how can we work it out now? But you don't ditch your winning partner, the one who brought you so long. It's just like, one, it's not really good manners. <laughs> right. And two, it's just not, it's not very cool. It's like that part, however annoying it is, it, showed up right and so number one to say hey thank you thank you so much right for for doing all your hard work and i really appreciate i can see and the compassionate part comes in it's like i can really see how stressful this can be and i can see why it has been so stressful because of the past situations right right and so after that 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 part may be Relax, you know, when we see and we validate our parts, it doesn't mean it's like you allow it to happen. It's like, I see why it is happening, right? I understand. And give it, give it space to relax also and be like, okay. But, and then you can, once there's compassion, empathy, relaxation as well, you can relax into it. You can start a dialogue. You can start like, listen, does this really serve us? Because essentially, like with your, let's say with your business partner, like with any relationships, you're like, okay, what do we want? What are our goals? And it's likely that you want the same things. You want to succeed, right? You, all, all of your parts, bringing family systems a little bit, they want to succeed. Same as mine. So what's the best strategy, right? And what is, and everyone has different skills. I was like, okay, maybe this skill set is not going to work. And then after that, that whenever there's a space of acceptance, it opens up a lot more options. And this is where creativity comes in. I mean, everything that I'm talking about, it's one of the techniques and one of the processes. I mean, this is, this is what I do, right? And this is what, why I'm excited about your pattern, you know, camp that's coming up. Is that with creativity, we switch off the manager, you know, we switch off those, those, th those protective defensive parts that are so feisty, that are ready to fight, that are like, you know, that we, we don't even think it's so automatic. But with creative practices, you can, it's nonverbal. So they speak a different language and you get to access them in a completely different um, language. And you get to speak and dialogue with them in a really quick and a really efficient way. And let me ask you this, like how many people when they come for your pattern camp, let's say, and we're talking different patterns, right? There's visual yeah. patterns and we're talking about internal patterns. But with the visual, once they start to draw, a lot of things rise to the surface, right? I mean, you've seen it in your students also. Because we activate a different type of intelligence. 